The intent of this Part 1 video is to review the Allies' Battle of the Atlantic, anti-submarine efforts, and address the overall contribution of the consolidated B-24 Liberators and its variants in defeating the World War II German submarine threat. Future videos will focus on weapons, tactics, and case studies of bombers versus submarine engagements. Of the 678 German submarines sank due to hostile action at sea, 250 were sunk by aircraft alone, and another 35 U-boats were sunk by joint ship and aircraft kills. The B-24s and its variants were credited with sinking more submarines than any other aircraft. The goal of the German Kriegsmarine was to use a submarine offensively by cutting off Great Britain from its supplies by sinking Allied shipping. One measure of the successfulness of the submarine campaign strategy is to compare the number of ships sunk versus the number of ships built. If Germany can sink more ships than the Allies can build, then the submarine campaign will be considered successful. The goal of Germany was to use their submarines to collapse Great Britain through a tonnage war. This chart illustrates the trend in Allied tonnage built versus sunk. The chart was extracted from the February 1943 declassified U.S. Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. All of the images shown in this video are declassified. The x-axis is the year and the year quarter from the start of the war to the end of 1942. The y-axis is the tonnage of shipping lost or built during that quarter. The shaded area represent quarters where more tonnage is lost than can be replaced. Great Britain is losing the tonnage war up to mid-1942. This zone represents what the German submariners called Happy Times Part 1 from July 1940 through October 1940. 282 Allied ships were sunk during this period. The U.S. entered the war in December 1941. The second Happy Times occurred during January 1942 through August 1942, before the U.S. could implement effective countermeasures. 609 Allied ships were sunk during this period. At the start of the war, the U.S. was woefully unprepared to take on the submarine threat. With the entry of the U.S. into the war, U.S. planners considered the aircraft as a last-ditch defense. As discussed in this April 1945 U.S. Air Force historical study, the Anti-Submarine Command Report. The report goes on to state that the aircraft were not equipped sufficiently to attack submarines, but did possess excellent search capabilities and could be used to loiter over the submarine, keeping it submerged, which will reduce the submarine's effectiveness. RAF Coastal Command shared their U-boat experience with the U.S. The British recommended the U.S. should adopt a seek and strike policy against German U-boats, use aircraft to attack submarines, and allocate a greater portion of aircraft to aggressively seek and destroy U-boats rather than use the aircraft for defensive convoy escort. Winston Churchill was quoted as saying, Nothing is more clearly proved than the well-escorted convoys, especially when protected by long-range aircraft, beat the U-boat. The state of U.S. Army Air Force's anti-submarine operational zones of coverage as of January 1, 1942, is shown in this image from the July 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Intelligence Report. The aerial patrolling zone is minimal. Ten months later, in October 1942, the U.S. Army Air Force's Anti-Submarine Command was activated. German U-boats virtually abandoned attacking shipping off the U.S. coastline. Ten months later, in July 1943, B-24s equipped for sub-hunting were operating from both sides of the Atlantic with patrol ranges of a thousand miles out to sea. The Battle of the Atlantic U.S. and British anti-submarine efforts and key events can be unpacked by looking at the Allied ship tonnage lost peaks and valleys over time, as shown in this graph extracted from the August 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Intelligence Report. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is the tonnage of Allied shipping lost to German submarines. The solid line is a tonnage lost per month. Happy Time 1 is located in this zone with 282 ships sunk. The British captured U-110 codebooks and its three rotor Enigma machine in May of 1941. The captured equipment helped the British Bletchley Park codebreakers decipher the submarine's communications. A reduction in shipping losses followed this event. The U.S. entered the war in December 1941. 
Sensing the codes may be compromised, the German Enigma machines were modified by adding a fourth rotor in February 1942. The British now lost the ability to decipher German submarine code communications. This starts a blackout period that lasts for seven months. This is also the Happy Times Part 2 with the associated 609 Allied ships sunk. The British captured U-559's Enigma machine in October 1942. This ends the Happy Time Part 2. A dramatic a dramatic reduction in shipping losses and a dramatic increase in submarine losses will shortly follow. May 1943 was the most pivotal month in the Battle of the Atlantic. Only 58 Allied ships were sunk. 41 of the 118 U-boats at sea were sunk in May of 1943, or 35% of the 118 U-boats deployed. 16 of the 41 U-boats were sunk by aircraft, while 12 were sunk by ships, and 5 subs were destroyed by a combination of aircraft and ships working together. The Kriegsmarine referred to May 1943 as Black May. Black May is considered the turning point during the Battle of the Atlantic. U-boat losses were so high that on May 24, 1943, Admiral Dernitz orders a temporary halt to the U-boat campaign and redeploys most of the submarines from the Atlantic. The German submarines never posed a significant threat after May 1943. This chart outlines the tonnage of Allied shipping loss throughout the entire war by German submarines. The zones of Happy Times 1, Happy Times 2, plus Black May are shaded. As clearly shown after Black May, the submarine threat to Allied shipping was but a fraction of the early war years. So when did aircraft become effective during the Battle of the Atlantic? This chart outlines a distribution of sunk submarines based on the attacking source. This chart was extracted from the June 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Intelligence Report. The x-axis is a year and quarter. The left y-axis is the number of U-boats sunk per quarter. The line in the chart is the total number of German U-boats sunk per that quarter. Black May is located here. The right y-axis is a percentage of German U-boat sunk by Allied aircraft, ships, subs, or other. Aircraft are clearly increasing their combat effectiveness against submarines as the Battle of the Atlantic progresses. The trend to more successful aircraft U-boat sinkings can be more clearly seen in this image from the July 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. Aircraft rapidly increased their share of U-boats destroyed from 10% in January of 1942 to 58% by July 1943. The larger share of U-boat kills is attributed to aircraft with longer range, better weapons, higher trained crews with greater experience. None of the reports discuss the contributions of the Bletchley Park code breakers since that information was considered top secret. This chart from the July 1943 intelligence report shown earlier outlines the ratio of the number of Allied ships sunk versus the number of U-boats sunk. This is a measure of the efficiency of the German U-boats or the Allied submarine efforts or both. The x-axis is the month of 1943. The left y-axis is the number of Allied merchant vessels sunk divided by the number of submarines sunk scaled from 0 to 15. Think of this value as a submarine's kill ratio. The blue line in the body of the chart is a calculated submarine's kill ratio. The German submarine's kill ratio peaked in March to about 12 to 1. The kill ratio dropped to around 1 to 1 after Black May. The red line in the body of the chart is tracking the number of U-boats sunk divided by the number of U-boats attacked. There is a significant increase in the lethality of the attacking force. Around 7% of German U-boats attacked were sunk in April of 1943. Just four months later, around 26% of German U-boats attacked were sunk in August of 1943. The B-24 bombers and other aircraft were contributing a large part to the increase in the combat engagement effectiveness. We will outline the bombers' anti-submarine weapons, tactics, and case studies in the next video. Winston Churchill wrote, The only thing that really frightened me during the war was the U-boat peril. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider commenting, liking, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.